there is a supernatural world that surrounds us, and sometimes it manifests to people like you and me. You hear stories about this, so much more, right here on Supernatural Confrontations. I'm going to go backwards a little bit with our um, UFO film series. This is number four uh, in our series. Since then, we've got done on crop circles and, of course, the, um, the cattle mutilation film. And now we're working on the Roswell part one and part two film, as we showed you on Monday, a clip from that. This goes back to number four, which is on abductions. In this, you'll meet Karen Wilkinson, Al Matthews, and Emil Jurek, all of these people have been abducted since they were kids. So very intense, um, buckle up, we'll get into that, and so much more, but first, a word from our trusted sponsor. Folks, are you feeling unsure about your finances these days? Well, you're not alone. That's why Noble Gold Investments is here to help. Just hear it straight from the folks that they've helped. The Noble crew will walk me through everything, no stress. With Noble Gold's help, I can finally sleep easy at night. And now this month, Noble Gold Investments is handing out a free 5-ounce Silver American, the beautiful coin, if you qualify for an IRA. Invest in gold and silver with Noble Gold Investments. Go to noblegoldinvestments.com now. That's noblegoldinvestments.com, folks. Remember, we've invested with them, and I am really glad we did. But number to call, 877-646-5347. Once again, that's 877-646-5347. Um, we invested with them, and I'm glad we did, especially when we look at the trillions of dollars that the United States is in debt. If it collapses, you and I both will be glad we put some of our money into gold or silver. So what we're looking at here is the abduction phenomenon. It is a very closely guarded secret. Um, people who are taken are ashamed. Uh, they are oftentimes, they hold it in. They don't say anything. They don't communicate with people. Uh, Al Matthews talks about this. Karen Wilkinson talks about it. Emil uh, uh, talks about it. And, and, and I'm going to roll the clip. And I think you'll find this incredibly interesting. It's riveting because these are people that have lived through it. And this is what makes number four in our series, our documentary series on UFOs, so poignant and telling because this is where the rubber meets the road. The phenomenon is real, it's burgeoning, and not going away. We can tap dance around it, we can pretend it doesn't exist, but let me say something to you. See this book here? If you were to take all the supernatural um, stories that are in this book and remove them, you wouldn't have anything. There'd be nothing left. Some genealogies, maybe some battle reports, that's about it. That's all you'd have. Do we really believe in a supernatural world? Do we really understand that, the, that what we are looking at is an ongoing battle between the Most High God, El Shaddai, El Elyon, and the fallen angel, the dragon? And it's spilling out onto our planet. The late Chuck Messler stated, on the record, when I posed the question to him, Chuck, what about the hybrids? What about the abductions? What's going on? Chuck said without hesitation, L.A., Satan's out number two to one. He's building an army. He's building an army. Remember this. In the book of Daniel, chapter 2, verse 43, it states very clearly, their seed will mingle with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave to them. Jim Williamson's work, the word cleave, is the same word that we get in a marriage contract way back in Genesis, for a man will, will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. It's a marriage contract. There's no marriage contract here. You are taken against your will and you are violated. I'll just leave it at that. Anyway, here's the clip. I'll weigh in on it on the other side. 
You've had experiences. Yes. You've had experiences. Yes. Tell us about the experiences. Going back as far as I can remember, the first time I really remember was the summer before my sixth birthday. And um, it happened usually always at the same place at my grandparents' farmhouse. Um, it wasn't just me, but I won't mention the other people. Um, and it was scary. I was just a scared little kid, you know. I used to think if I could um, find a suitcase and put it under the bed and get inside it and zip it up, they wouldn't be able to find me. I don't know. The first I remember, I was, it was, I was five years old. And what happened when you were five? What, tell us. Um, I was taken from my grandparents' farmhouse. And they knew who I was. And they took my sister too, but she was not having it. <laughs> um, I was very compliant. I was a scared little kid. I did whatever anyone told me to do. Um, How old was your sister? My sister was eight years old at the time. They would come at night when I was there, and um, I would be in a place that was underground most of the time. It wasn't, I don't remember ever being up in the air. I remember being in the air traveling, but I don't have any ship type memories. I don't, but we, they would take me um, to a place, a facility. Um, the walls were smooth and white and curved. It's funny the things you remember when you're little. And um, there were other children there were lots of other children there. Well, I think I've been abducted since childhood. I mean, I can remember uh, these beings, if you want to call them that, when I was five, six, seven years old, um, entering my bedroom one way or another. And it continued up till about, I was 15. The first time I remember being taken was in 1992. I do believe when I was a child and I was having these ongoing things out of the hockey rink, but back then, I did not have a clue what was going on with me. I was having nosebleeds, paranoia, scared to go in the basement. All of a sudden, after seeing these UFOs, these things were happening to me. But as a child, I didn't know what it was. I'd, I'd ask my mom, i go, why am I having these nosebleeds? What are these weird marks on me? Oh, that's a weird spider bite. My mom didn't know either. When, when you were taken from the bed, do you remember how you left the room? Sometimes, yes, I do. Sometimes it was up through the ceiling. There was this um, Lone Ranger square lamp on the ceiling, and sometimes I would go right up so close to that lamp. It was, I was like, how am I not, you know, how is this not hurting me? And be so close to it, I could see every detail in that lamp. And sometimes it was through the window which was there beside the bed. Also, always closed. So they didn't open the window, you went through the window? Through the window, or through the ceiling. But at times, I can, it's weird, I can sense something in the room, uh, and it makes you really frightened inside, like an animal that's about to get captured or something. Mm. And um, that's it in a short. I mean, I've just been torment. I always told as a child that I was um, having nightmares and walking to my sleep. So they put locks on the doors and windows so I can't get out because they're afraid I'm going to drown in the pool. And they find me outside with everything still locked up. So you explain that to me. I was in my room and woke up at 2.22 2, 2 in the morning. How do I know that? I catapulted upright out of bed. I was sleeping on my back. I turned and looked at my alarm clock. It was 2.22. Two, two. Then I heard a voice in my head. This stuff I remember as clear as day. And something was telling me to open the curtain in the bedroom. And this sounds, obviously this is all strange. I'm looking at the curtains going, no, I'm not looking out. I'm not looking out. I'm not opening the curtain. The 
next thing you know, what am I doing? I'm opening the curtain and I see light eman emanating outside by an oak tree right outside the window, maybe four or five feet away from the window with these two beings I thought they were walking up around the tree. I looked down at their feet and they were floating. They were humanoid, square jaws, ghost white, and once again, totally black eyes. And every time they went around the tree, their head would turn and look at me looking out the window. I just think of me now looking out that window with these things staring at me with my jaw dropped going, what the heck, here we go again. Then missing time, five hours later, don't remember what happened, after they shut me off, after seeing these beings outside, five hours later, dropped onto my couch from four or five feet. Did I go through the ceiling? I don't know. Shaking again, wet my pants, violated. That's all I know. Karen, I want you to know something. Maybe this will make you feel better. Every person I've ever talked to that's been taken, that's been abducted, they go through the window and the window never opens. <laughs> You're not alone. No. It's just, you, and you're like, am I crazy? Did I dream this? But it happens again and again, and you feel it, and you're there, and you remember it. When the memories are there, it's just... I say, well, does the window in some way open by itself? And I say, no, no, it doesn't open by itself. Mm. And she says, I think I'm going right through the closed window. Oh. And she says to me, does anybody else ever report that? Not knowing that everybody reports that what you're looking at when people fly through windows and walls and ceilings and this and that is future physics mm -hmm. mathematically it can be done if you do it mathematically because you know if, if the earth can be squashed into the size of a grape or a softball or whatever it is right. um, everything is made up of molecules and their space right, and true. Right, so, so mathematically it's possible, but in our universe and in our level of technology, which is brand new, uh, it can't be done. What did the entities look like? There were different ones at different times. Most of them, especially to me, were really scary. They had, their f faces weren't right. Their eyes were too big and their heads were really big and they were just cold and pale and i remember touching one like the a hand of one once and it felt like a, it's touching a cold stick and it just it was scary so what what did they look like what what did these entities look like there are typical grays. I didn't get a quick, I only got a quick look at them because they were so funny. And there they were, but they were tall. One was about almost six, eight height of um, the door jam. And another guy was maybe five, nine. And I didn't really, can't tell you what the eyes looked like because it was dark. But you can definitely see the figures. You can see the outlines. You can see the silver or gray. There was no doubt in my mind that I was going to just try to run through them and try to get out the front door. And I was at you know, 3 or 4 in the morning, whatever it was, I was out in my front yard standing by myself, afraid to go back in the house for a while. Folks, the abduction phenomena is real. It's burgeoning and not going away. In our film, we have four people, that, four abductees, that come on camera and tell their story. It's riveting. It's visceral. Karen... Uh, Wilkinson's new book, Stolen Seed, Evil Harvest. We are so happy and so honored to be publishing that. And uh, it's, it, we've been selling a lot of them, flying out of here. So you want to go to the store and order that. Stolen Seed, Evil Harvest, because that's exactly what's going on. And in that, it's very poignant, it's very intense. But Karen was a lifelong abductee, and then she got free through Jesus. Same thing with Al Matthews, same thing with Emil Jurek. Same thing with Angela. All these, all these people are born again spiritual Christians. They are free from the abduction phenomena. Why? Because there's a name that's greater than all of their names. It's not Sunday school stuff, and I get that. But it's, it's, it's where the rubber meets the road. It's in your face. It's exposing the works of darkness. 
Our mission statement is to expose the deception of the prince of the power of the air and to herald the return of the king, Jesus. Anyway, folks, check it out, lamarzuli.net, lamarzuli.net. If you want to stream these, streaming.lamarzuli.net, number four, on abductions in the ongoing UFO film series. Uh, my business partner, Gil Zimmerman, flies down. We're working on the film. And um, by the time you're watching this, we'll probably have it handed off to the duplicator. So if you order and do the pre-sale, you can get it before Christmas, God willing depending on postage. Thanks so much for watching, folks. Remember, there is a supernatural world that surrounds us, and sometimes it manifests to people like you and me. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile, found sometime last week, has been inspected at Roswell, New Mexico, and sent to Wright Field, Ohio, for further inspection. Late this afternoon, a bulletin from New Mexico suggested that the widely publicized mystery of the flying saucers may soon be solved. Army Air Force officers reported that one of the strange disks had been found and inspected sometime last week. Our correspondents in Los Angeles and Chicago have been in contact with Army officials endeavoring to obtain all possible late information. Joe Wilson reports to us now from Chicago. The Army may be getting to the bottom of all this talk about the so-called flying saucer. As a matter of fact, the 509th Atomic Bomb Group headquarters at Roswell, New Mexico, reports that it has received one of the disks which landed on a ranch outside Roswell. The disc landed at a ranch at Corona, New Mexico, and the rancher turned it over to the Air Force. Rancher W.W. W. Brizel was the man who discovered the saucer. Colonel William Blanchard of the Roswell Air Base refuses to give details of what the flying disc looks like.